that still works. Anybody glad that the blood still works? The blood still works. Glad about it. Glad about it. away my sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Somebody said that it reaches to the highest mountain. flows to the lowest valley. It's the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never, never, ever, never, ever, ever lose its power. still works. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. It feel, feels like church now. Amen. Feels like church now. Feels like church. Amen. We honor the Lord. We thank God for Jesus, his shed blood on the cross, his blood that washes and cleanses us from all of our sins. We are so glad that Jesus Christ went to an old rugged cross. He hung, bled, and died that we might have the right to the tree of life. Didn't have to do it, but he did. God, the Bible says they put him in a ball tomb. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know who holds my future. Life is worth but living just because he lives. Got up from the grave, went back to his father and one day. He's coming back for a church with all spot or wrinkle. We'll be caught up to meet him in the end. So shall we forever be with the Lord. Isn't that good news? That's good news. That, that's good news. That's good news. Uh, we thank God for all of the preachers who are assembled and their spouses. To all of our musicians, God bless you. And uh, to Mother Bird, God bless you today. And uh, to the First Lady of Greater Bethel, Reverend Gloria Redden. Greet you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. If you'll turn your Bibles to the Old Testament book of the Judges.
and we want to use as our text the seventh verse. I'll be reading it from the Message Bible, the Old Testament book of Judges, the seventh chapter and the seventh verse houses our text. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we, we thank you for this preaching moment. God, help your servant to preach your word today that somebody might be encouraged and changed and delivered and saved and set free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Judges, the seventh chapter and the seventh verse. God said to Gideon, I'll use the 300 men who lapped at the stream to save you and give Midian into your hands. All the rest may go home. I want to uh, again preach from the topic of the fight is already fixed. The fight is already fixed. And since God is for you, who can be against you? If God is for you, who can be against you. Turn and tell your neighbor that if God is for you, who can be against you? Uh, today I want to begin by repeating two points, if you would allow me, uh, that I made uh, in last week's message. We talked about in the 16th chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, uh, when Jesus gathered his disciples around him and uh, he asked them, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Uh, and they came up with uh, some answers. They said uh, that some say that you are John the Baptist and some say uh, that you are Elijah and some say that you are uh, Jeremiah. And uh, uh, how many know that it doesn't matter uh, what some say, but it is what God says about you uh, that counts. I, I heard somebody say uh, that it's not what they call you, but what you answer to. Uh, I, I'm here to tell you that it doesn't matter what people say about you, uh, but you ought to be very concerned about uh, what God says about you, because what God says about you is the only thing that really counts. How many know that if God says that you are blessed, uh, then you are just blessed. I don't care uh, what your past look like. I don't care uh, where you used to go and what you used to do. Uh, but if God says that you are blessed today, you ought to stand in the promise uh, that you are blessed. And, and can I get a witness? How many know uh, that you are blessed in the city and you are blessed in the field? You're blessed coming out and you're blessed coming back in. It doesn't matter where you are. How many know that God can bless you right where you are. They said that some said uh, John the Baptist and some uh, Elijah and some Jeremiah uh, but he turned to them and he asked them well who do you say that I am? And it was Peter who spoke up and said thou art the Christ the son of the living God. Uh, Jesus says to Peter uh, that flesh and blood has not revealed that to you but my father that's in heaven and upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, the message Bible puts it like this. Uh, this is the rock on which I will put together my church, a church so expansive uh, with energy. And, and I want to stop right there because uh, as for me, I believe uh, that the church and worship in the church should have some energy. I, I believe that church ought not be dead, but I believe that church service and worship ought to be alive. Because the God we serve ain't dead, but the God we serve is alive. And if God is alive, then you ought to act like you are alive. Anything dead ought to be buried. But how many know that if God saved you and if God did 
great things for you. You ought to be able every now and then uh, to wave your hand. Every now and then you ought to be able to open up your mouth and tell God thank you for the great things that he has done. There's a wailing wall in Jerusalem and if you look at that wall you'll see the men at that wall they'll be moving back and forth. Back and forth they always move almost non-stop they're moving back and forth and somebody asks them why do you move back and forth like that and the answer was we move like that to remind us that our God is always on the move he's always doing something and yes we should have so much energy that not even the gates of hell are not be able to keep us out oh God I thank you today I need some folk to again testify that if you've been through some situations that were hard been through some situations that wasn't nice that wasn't pleasant it was like going through hell and even though you had to go through some stuff somehow some way you are still here giving God glory and giving God praise for bringing you from a mighty long way. Why don't you shake somebody's hand like you're going to shake it off and say, neighbor, I'm here today not because I haven't been through some hard stuff, but through it all, God brought me out. All of the hell that I had to go through. Come on, give somebody a high five and say, neighbor, you don't look like all that you've been through. That's the first point. The second point is God has given you the power and the authority to march in a hellish situation and march out with victory in your life because it's not by might not by power but by my spirit saith the Lord well last night I saw this person walking through over hot glass and I googled it and I asked the Google to tell me how it is you can march over hot stuff and not get burned well Google read back and told me you have to just keep on moving come on tap your neighbor and say neighbor no matter what I keep on moving in the good times keep on moving in the bad times keep on moving when you're up keep on moving when you're down keep on moving when they talk about you keep on moving when they scandalize your name keep on moving when you're broke keep on moving when you're depressed keep on moving come on tap your neighbor and say neighbor keep moving listen if your neighbor won't talk to you maybe you have the wrong neighbor but tap somebody around you and say neighbor no matter what I'm gonna keep on Cause God is on my side And I've got a feeling Everything is going to be Alright Because 1 John 4.4 4 
says, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, for greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. And the one thing our text teaches us is that numbers really don't matter in the economy of God. You would think that the greater the number of people would assure us of victory. But I say unto you that if two or three a touch in a breeze on earth as agreeing on anything anything you ask it shall be given now I gotta challenge you you gotta touch two or three people around you and say neighbor I agree with you that you bless that your blessing is on Come on, tap up and say, I'm agreeing with you that your healing is on the way. I'm agreeing with you that the devil is a liar. I'm agreeing with you that victory is already yours. I'm agreeing with you. And the Bible says, when two or three are gathered together, in my name, I will be in the midst of you. The message Bible says, when two or three of you get together on anything at all on earth and make a prayer of it, my Father in heaven goes into action. Lord, thank you today. I'm agreeing with you. That God is about to go into action on your behalf. And now that scripture is not an excuse for low numbers in attendance. You know how it is. We get a handful of foes and we make an excuse. Well, God said, with two or three are gathered together, he'll be in the middle. And yes, that's true, but it's also an assurance that effective worship, powerful worship, healing worship, devil chasing worship, miracle producing worship, worship with energy and excitement can take place with two or three. It's the power of the two or three. God, I thank you. But can I tell you something? Come on, can I tell you something? It's nice to have 50 or 100 or 150 or the two or three. But every now and then, when I get alone by myself, I don't need two or three. I don't need 50. I don't need a hundred. I don't need a hundred and fifty. But if I get alone with God, me and God can have church all by ourselves. I sing my hymns. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help that I know. I sing a Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Church all by yourself. When you were in your car, you put the music on, and the music got good to you. And before you knew it, you were lifting up your hands. 
fingers. Shake somebody's hand. Like you're going to shake it off. And say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Numbers don't matter. You can worship God all by yourself. Some of my best worship was when I was by myself. I could cry by myself. I could pray by myself. I could preach sermons to myself. I could anoint my own head by myself. And I could feel the presence of the Lord in my house. Aren't you glad that God is everywhere at the same time? Because numbers don't count. My Bible says one can chase a thousand. Two can put Lord help me when I first read that scripture you would think when it said one can chase a thousand and two can put ten thousand to flight you would think that the next number would be three could put thirty thousand to flight but that's not the next number one is a thousand two is ten thousand three is a hundred Thousand. You add a zero to that, and four is one million. That means, can I tell you what that means? That means, right in your row, with the two or three in your row, if you got two or three that believes in the power of God, we can make the devil run. Miracles could take place right in your row. I wish you go down the row and say neighbor. Come on, touch your neighbor. Say neighbor. Receive today miracles in the name of Jesus. Receive today healing in the name of Jesus. Receive today provision. It does not matter. It does not matter what the devil said. I've got power right in my row. I'm going to touch and agree right in the row. I'm agreeing today right in the row that my God is able to do anything but fail. He's worthy. He's 
have people just join hands all across this sanctuary. I, I ain't talking about no loose hand. I ain't talking about no, no loose holding hands. I mean, grip that neighbor's hand. Don't squeeze it off. But a nice grip to it. A nice grip. How many know that God is able? Yes. Come on, do you know God is able? Do yes. you know God is able? Come on, God is able. Yes. And right now, all across this sanctuary, I want you to give that little hand, that hand a little squeeze. And I want you to thank God for the hand that you're holding right thank now. You. Come on, thank God for that hand that you're holding. That, that hand has a testimony. That you wouldn't believe. You don't know what that hand had to go through. You, you'd be surprised. At all of the hell that hand had to go through. But they're still here today. Still here today. Said, I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to make it work for your good. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn it around. And I'm going to make it work for your good. Come on, give that hand a little squeeze. I'm looking at Brother Patterson. I'm looking at others of you. You've been through surgery. You had sickness in your body. And that wasn't nothing but the devil trying to steal your joy. Do a new thing in us. 
us. And we thank you because we know victory is already ours. With our lips, we open up our lips and we thank you because we know that victory is already ours. We shout hallelujah because we know that the victory shall be ours. In Jesus' name, we ask it all. Let the church say amen. Amen. And amen. Come on, hug your neighbor. Just hug your neighbor right where you are.